So did you grow up in New York City? Yes, I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. Tell me about uh, childhood in New York City for you. Oh my goodness, childhood in New York City, it was um, amazing. I got the best of both worlds. I lived in Queens, Hollis, Queens, the home of Run DMC. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Hollis, Queens, New York, and um, I got the best of both worlds um, because I went to high school in Manhattan. So. I got the city experience and then the suburb kind of experience as well, but I was exposed to a myriad of different arts and cultural opportunities from um, birth. My mother's a singer. I come from a family of singers and performers, um, so I was really in it um, from church, you know, to the community groups, to um, a privatized high school. I went to the music and performing arts school, the fame school, and where I sing, I am a singer. I haven't sang in a while, but I am a trained singer and a writer. So the arts have been a part of my life from the home to schools to communities. I've, I've just loved it and I've been involved in every um, aspect and facet of it from as early as I can remember. And sing, so what, what is your, what are your favorite things to sing? Do, is it like? Now? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Now I don't do much singing <laughs> except in the shower, but um, I am classically trained. Um, so I enjoy singing now a lot of neo soul music, a lot of gospel music. Those are things I think I most enjoy. And then actually um, chamber music I'm a fan of. So those are my three top favorites that I listen to and I will sing if I'm in the car um, or if I'm in the shower or at home. But those are my top three right there. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. What school number did you go to? Did you go to uh, private school or Catholic? Or, um, Both. Okay. Yes. So okay. I went to um, PS13 in Queens when I was um, for elementary school, and then I moved. Um, so actually, I started out, um, for those who are familiar with uh, New York City or Queens, I lived in uh, Left Rack City. Left Rack City for my primary years, and I went to PS13. And then after that, I moved to um, Hollis, Queens, and I went to... PS 134 for like maybe a year or six months and that was not quite the fit for me. So my mother put me in um, a Christian private school and I did that until eighth grade. And then I went to the specialized high school, LaGuardia Music and Performing Arts in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> and that was where you had the, did you have the vision that you were going to become a singer or was this the, when the film took over for funny, you? Funny, funny story. So fun fact, my sister is a beast. She's a phenomenal singer. She's just bomb. She knew she was going to sing since birth, she's been singing from the womb. Me, I can sing, but that's just not my main thing. I've always been a talker, a storyteller, very animated, very conversational. Um, so I auditioned for this school. I auditioned for drama and I auditioned for vocal. I auditioned, I auditioned for vocal because that's what my family did. I can sing, my sister was a known singer. She was in the 11th grade, I was entering as a freshman. And I auditioned for vocal but I really wanted to get in for theater. I wanted to get in for drama. So I got a call back for theater, and I was like, yes, this is it. And then I didn't get in for drama. I got in for vocal. So I was so bummed. I was so annoyed. I was so hurt. So I went through and matriculated as a vocalist, as a singer, but I never lost my passion for theater arts or for performing arts. So um, in college, I really was, um, it never left me. So. I um, pursued communications as an undergrad in college, and theater was always in the backdrop of what I did, and so I started pursuing that more post-college. Um, but yeah, for high school, I was trained as a singer, not as a thespian, which I was kind of annoyed about. But life is full circle, you know, and what you really are passionate about comes back to you in different ways, and I ended up falling into theater arts film, dramatic arts, um, writing, directing, where I was like, aha, this is it. But it took me a while to get back there, but I got back there. Yeah. What was it about film or performing arts that drew you, that you saw, you're like, yes, that's it. Was there something in particular that you saw, you're like, that's, that's it, that's what I want to be a part of? I feel like I was compelled by the stage. I mean, the stage did something, the, just the, the, the spotlight, the storytelling aspect, the relationship with the audience, the range of emotions that you can go through, 
the way you can captivate an audience um, and, and be in relationship with them, I found that medium extremely powerful. I was overwhelmed by it by a young age. And I think one of my earliest memories of directing, I didn't realize this until a little bit later, um, Michael Landis, he directed um, Thriller. <laughs> he also directed American Werewolf in London. And I was really fascinated with the making of Thriller as a child more than I was with Thriller. Um, the behind the scenes, the makeup, the choreography, just the construction of things. So that for me was like theater, but on steroids. So I loved the whole idea of this filmic aspect to video, to song, and I, wa I know it by heart. Like I know all the players, I know all the choreography, I know the singers, I know the dialogue. Um, but I was obsessed with the making of Thriller as a child. And I think that had a heavy influence on my desire to move from stage to cinema or to film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you were trying to go even further. You were trying to be, what you said, what you said the next Spielberg? <gasps> oh, you, I you, was. You were, you were driven. I was very driven. So I've, I'm fast forwarding some, some years, but. Uh, did I, I skip anything before we go into that? Did yeah, I skip well, anything, that, so, any uh, dramatic moments in your life that we could touch on there? Well, professionally. So I went to, um, shout out to Johnson C. Smith University, the best historically black college. I know people in North Carolina and Greensboro are like, what? But no, I went to Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte for undergrad where I majored in communications. And um, I'm a talker, you know, I like to get the tea. And I loved communications and I was, a I was a communications broadcast major. So I thought I was gonna be a news broadcaster. Um, I did that for about a year. I was a producer after I graduated and I hated it. I worked at a Charlotte station and I did not like it because I was writing um, the same thing every day, two people shot, one dead. I just didn't like the style of writing, and um, it wasn't a fit for me. Just at the time, it wasn't a fit. It's very rudimentary, and it's very much up front. Yeah. Five seconds, mm -hmm. done. Right. There's like three shots, That's and then it. you're on to the next story. On to the next story. And, and my internship in college was through the Charlotte Observer, so I was able to write and be more colorful, and I thought I was going to have some like that type of experience at the television station. That wasn't it. Um, you have to write, or at the time, we were encouraged to write at a seventh grade reading level um, because that was the audience. So, I mean, all the things that go into production, I just wasn't, I was thinking I was going to have a different experience, but I realized this is not the medium for me. I don't want to do this. I'm not feeling, I'm fulfilling my creative self. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I knew I wasn't happy. So I did that for about two years and I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to be a producer. Um, so long story short, I started, um, teaching creative arts with young people. And I started working with um, adjudicated youth or youth who needed some supports, right? Um, through the Upward Bound program in Charlotte. And I was just so fulfilled through that experience because I was falling back on my roots. I was working in theater arts. I was writing poetry. I was you know, giving this gift to young people and watching them shine. So I was like, yes, I want to be in education. So I actually did that for about six years and I started working primarily with adjudicated youth in Charlotte um, schools and these kids this was their last stop like it was like you're mandated to come to high school. Wait I feel very stupid. Adjudicated what does that mean? I've never uh, heard that before. Uh, young people who are caught up in the juvenile system they have charges against them they've been caught up in some type of crime or um, just troubled teens and I put that in quotes but kids who are under resourced under supported and they were mandated to come to school. Probably so, just need some guidance. Need some guidance um, who, are, who are in the penal system because they're fa some of them were facing some serious charges. Uh, half of my students had ankle bracelets, so they had to come to school. Um, and here I am talking about theater and Shakespeare <laughs> and spoken word poetry and creative writing. But it was the most amazing experience. Um, it was so rewarding to shine a positive light on these young people, to say, now I want you on the stage um, you don't like Shakespeare because they hated it. Okay, fine. He's not my favorite either. It's, However, it, the language is hard to grasp. The it's language, a different. It's yeah. It's hard for us to relate to anything like that. The language was hard to grasp, but I would tell them the stories are what you know. Like it's a lot of drama, you know, in the stories. But that that was not. Yeah, the there's thing. a lot of betrayal. Yes, there's a lot scandal. Of backtalk. Yes, there's scandal. Yes, there's, power grabs. Oh, there, yes, there's a All lot of, of power it. grabs. All of it. So. I tried to engage with them in that way, but I found the most um, successful thing was to turn the camera around on them and to get to know them. 
tell me your story. What is your, what is your story? Who are you? You know, why are you here? What are you most passionate about? And at first they were like, what? Are you an op? Are you like, are you with the police? Are you, why are you shining like on me in this way? But it was, they really bit after a while. And um, I built an amazing rapport and I, that was so successful, I started creating writing plays centered around themes that they wanted. Was there something, you said that, that it bit, was there something you observed that made it bite, like something that, I don't know, maybe a connection or something? Well, like what made it, like, oh, they're catching on? Positive reinforcement. I was now not judging them. I was, a, I was an adult, I was a, an administrator, I was um, an authoritative figure that didn't judge them. And I was listening to them tell their story without judgment. And I, I felt there was value in what they had to share, not just to me, but to an audience. And, I, and there was healing in it for them. And um, they were humanized. So that became part of something I really enjoyed, humanizing a population or a demographic or a group of people that don't get to tell their story in this way. I don't want you to be the, the thug that has three charges. I want you to be the young man who made these life choices and tell me why. And now how do you feel about that? So that was the difference I think for them and I really loved empowering young people in that way. So I did that for about six years and wrote original plays and got communities involved and it was just really an amazing experience as a young person trying to find her way as a creative professional, as a professional. So I really enjoyed that, that process. It was great, undergrad, post-grad, those years were pretty, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating. Yeah, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. But then I was still kind of starving professionally. Like, what am I going to do? This is not fulfilling on every level, which led me to go back to school. And then I went to um, Howard University, HU, another, the best HBCU in the, oh, you're <laughs> in the start country. Trouble yeah, here. I'm going to start in trouble. But I, I shout out those two schools, Howard University. Um, in Washington, D.C., where I pursued my, my master's in fine arts and film. And that is where I, it was confirmed. Like, this was the medium for me. I've done spoken word performance poetry. I've been a playwright. Um, I even thought I was going to be a novelist at some point in time. I've written for, you know, papers. This medium of film writing and directing is, is the medium that um, is for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about, I, I have to ask, what, what are some of your favorite films? Oh my goodness, um, The Deer Hunter is one of my favorite films, all of The Godfather, all of The Godfather. Wait a minute, you just said The Godfather. All of them, all of them. I, number two, the second one is my favorite, but I'm obsessed with Coppola, I'm, I'm obsessed with all the work that he does. Nothing But a Man, the film from the 60s, people go check it out, it's a really good film. Um, Sankofa by an amazing independent filmmaker, Haile Garima, amazing film. So I'm inspired by a lot of different um, pieces, The Wiz in the 70s, not The Wizard of Oz, or both The Wizard of Oz and The Wiz, but yeah, so those are my films that I really like lean into when I want to just be a filmmaker and think and process. You just became John and I's like favorite person. Now. Really? Yeah, oh my God, we have, we talk about, we quote The Godfather, like we insert it into conversations like. I could do it, I, I could do I, it too. Yeah, I, so we ordered pizza the other, I have to tell you this story. We, we ordered pizza the other day, I was going down the road. Mm -hmm. We ordered pizza and uh, there's this wonderful place in uh, Wits, it's called Chow's and they have these cannolis there. <laughs> and we ran, we didn't have dinner and I was, <laughs> Somebody else was ordering because I was driving. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving down the road and we ordered the pizza. We, we there was a big discussion about what we wanted on it. And, you know, pineapple, no pineapple, all that. You know, that's a huge <laughs> argument. Anyway, uh, I'm stealing the interview here. But um, no, we're going down it. the road and if I, I, every time I get I go to this place, I have to have the cannolis. And, and what I said, does say? everybody, 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 you know, and as he's, he's calling, my buddy, he's calling, he's calling. And I, he's like, yeah, I got two parts. Uh, you know, uh, three pizzas, blah, blah, blah. I said, don't forget the cannolis. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the line, drop the gun. Oh, Keep leave the, the gun. Leave, leave the gun. Leave the gun. Take, Take the cannolis. <laughs> yes. You know, the, and that, sorry, sidetrack. No, you're fine. That actor just threw that line in. He Did was he? supposed to say, all he was supposed to say, leave the gun, because that was always the thing. You left the gun. And then he just remembered, mm. take the cannolis. Take the cannolis. And oh, like, it, uh, Coppola, I read his book, Take the Gun, Leave the Cannolis. That's the name of the book. Uh -huh. And he said it really wasn't that big of a hit. Like, oh uh, the set didn't go 
crazy over that, but he's like, yeah, it worked. It and works. then like everybody just knows it. Every, that's the line. Like yeah. every Thanksgiving, they play a marathon of. Oh, it's a family <laughs> movie. <laughs> it's a right. It's the appropriate film oh show during the holiday season. No, right? No, but yeah, I, that's my. I'm obsessed with that that film. It's it's oh, like and so it, good. It goes even deeper because I watched a. Um, I just read Machiavelli because I started going mm. deeper into things on uh, The Godfather. And I watched, all the, there's somebody, there's a YouTube person, they do this like series of like breaking things down. Like, how did Michael know about this? How did Michael know about that? Because he just seems to know everything. Yeah. Or, or Vito. Yeah. They just seem to know yeah. everything. And yeah. you're just like, how do they have the right answers all the time, every time? Well, Michael towards the end didn't really, but he goes, he goes down a, Bad path. Very this path. is the wonderful thing about film mm -hmm. and what you can show. Anyway, what you can show. No, no, you're right. You're right. And, and um, but anyway, and so it uh, it noted that Machiavelli was a big part of this. So I read his book, The Prince, mm. and how um, there's a lot of little similarities. Like I'm like, oh my god! Like they knew what they were doing. They took all these old principles of like old Italian empires and they inserted them into this film. And yeah. it's just. It's genius. Genius. It is. It and is especially genius. when you knew, you understood about how it was written. It was written by uh, um, Mario Puzo, who's mm -hmm. really, he was mm -hmm. a gambling addict, huge gambling mm. addict. Oh, yeah, he had a lot of problems. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, and he wrote many books that were for, like, huge failures, and he owed a lot of money to a lot of people, which actually aided him in this because he was gambling and he was hanging out with mobsters. And this is how he, like, heard. This is how he kind of learned. Oh. Was he was gang... He, and so the mob actually used it to get to know him, too, because wow. they heard about this book, The Godfather, and they're like, well, if you're going to do the book, then let's, have let's a do it, but we don't know about you, and if you're going to write these things, you're going to put us in a bad light, and we don't like that. Mm -hmm. So I, there's a lot of little... That's deep. Yeah. That's oh, deep. there's a lot to no, this. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazingly well-done story from um, beginning to end. And the thing that I, I find fascinating about that, when I listen to Coppola talk about his experience with The Godfather, um, he had a shadow director, I think, the whole time. Like, the studio was going to, oh, yeah. like, nix him, or they didn't think he was doing a great job. So that whole time, he was working and trying to stay focused, but there was something looming over him the entire time. So for me, that intense focus um, speaks to his process and how he's able to still connect and work and create such a work, I find that I'm more, I'm more impressed and fascinated with that than anything else. So, what I yeah. th so I find it, they, they hated, they didn't, so they, they thought he was supposed to be just like this young director that they yeah. could manipulate. Yeah. And they didn't want, they really didn't want him. They wanted it to be a modern film set in the 70s because uh, period pieces are too expensive. Uh, they Very. didn't want Marlon Brando. They mm -hmm. hated Marlon Brando. Mm. Uh, they hated Al Pacino, mm. which, Could you have, oh my God. Yeah. And, and then uh, you think about all the movies that he was in, uh, you know, after that. Mm -hmm. And just the, th I mean, they just didn't think he was, until he, um, until he takes out uh, the, until he does the scene in the restaurant where he steps up and becomes yes. the leader. Yes. That was the scene. And it took them 16 hours to do that scene, apparently. And they said uh, the character that played McCluskey was eating and eating. He kept eating spaghetti. He said, "I felt like my stomach was going to explode because <laughs> they kept, you know, they, you know, they shot take and then they the had take, to clean up take, and yeah, do it again." Set, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, the stories about that movie set. I mean, yeah, it's just they can, it, you can just go on and talk about it for days. But I, I loved everything about um, that film and all the things that were not planned that make the movie. Um, we were, I know, in film school, we talked about the oranges like the significance of the oranges and I think Coppola was like there was no signi like <laughs> it was no it just happened to be a theme whenever someone died or a cop died I think um a bag of oranges or, or oranges were in every scene it was just it was just crazy like you could look at that and dissect that film over and over and find new things that yeah. were amazing about it but he's one of my favorite directors one of my favorite films um but yeah, I have so many for so many different reasons, but the, the ones I, I named were just significant in helping me shape and form um, my ideas around who I wanted to be and how I wanted to tell a story. Um, really significant, you know. Spike Lee, of course, as well. I've sat and watched him. He's come to Howard and 
just how he frames his stories and how he attacks themes and tried new things. It's just, you know, I have a lot of sources for um, inspiration, but I, I, I knew that that is how I wanted to tell stories from here on out. So I've been working on some things for a while and in between living life and being an adult and momming. Um, so yeah, I haven't quite got to where I want to be there, but I found another level of success and satisfaction professionally working with individual artists and organizations. Um, after grad school, I, I'm pivoting, but after grad school in Washington, D.C., I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and a lot of my male counterparts were going to L.A. or doing different things, and I had um, recently gotten married and had a baby, and those things were not realistic. Like, that wasn't going to happen, and I was about a bit stressed about that um, initially, but I had a mentor Sonia Williams, one of my professors at Howard, she was like, "Could do you really think you're going to spend 18 hours on set right now away from your baby, like knowing who you are? Is that what you want? And I was, no. So what are you crying for? Like, figure, <laughs> figure it out. You know, figure it out. What else are you most passionate about? And what I was most passionate about and still am, working with creatives, whether it's youth or adults, helping them thrive in whatever capacity that means. So whether it's finding funding or teaching a class, um, I really get some joy out of doing that type of work. So I've done that. I did that for about a decade after grad school with various nonprofits and then working with quasi city agencies in DC and Baltimore. Um, and then it kind of led me to here, you know, it's kind of how I got here. Pivot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tell me about how you found this position, or did you learn about Greensboro first, and then the position? So I knew it? I knew about Greensboro because um, when I attended Johnson C. Smith about a thousand years ago, my sister also was attending Bennett College. So I had been here. Um, I'd been um, I frequented Greensboro to see my sister while she was in school. I have the privilege of saying I actually saw Tupac live um, at A and T's homecoming back in the day. Um, most people can't say that, but I did. So I was very familiar with North Carolina and Greensboro, and I lived here for, in North Carolina for a decade after I graduated undergrad. But doing the work in Baltimore, I was the Arts Council Director for the City of Baltimore for nearly five years, and I did some work there with um, organizations really trying to help. Um, the, the organization I worked for was an umbrella organization. We were part Arts Council, part Film Office, part um, event producer. We were a lot of different things and it wasn't really a true dedicated separate arts council so I, I hit a lot of roadblocks in that process but in the meantime I, I met an amazing group of artists and organizations and really did try to help facilitate equitable processes in terms of grant funding and grant making. And then so um, I did that for almost five years and then I under a, a bunch of different circumstances, lots of transitions happening within the organization, looking at my life and what I had to offer and what I was doing and where I wanted to go, I like big ideas, I like big jobs. Um, so when I saw this opportunity that became available, I was like, could I do that? Um, yeah, I could, you know, and I was excited about the idea of returning to North Carolina um, because I was scoping out the scene here and culturally Greensboro is, is on the cusp of being like, the next big thing. There's so much talent here. Um, the the arts community, the the dance scene, the the visual art scene here is thriving, and I just feel like it really is about to pop. And I want to be a part of that process. I want to come and not only bring new ideas, but really galvanize and support the economy. What's happening here, from the individual artists to the large scale organization to the midsize, to really craft it and and help. Greensboro brand its cultural identity because it really is what's going on. Like, I love it here. It's it's so many talented people, so many amazing organizations. Um, Greensboro is where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, that is huge because mm -hmm. you are talking about a, like, that's a lifetime body of work to <laughs> take in all of those the, the different organizations and the different levels of um, artistry mm -hmm. that we have is like huge. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But one thing I want people to know, um, I want artists to know that they're supported in the city. You know, every artist, not just this, the fully established ones, the ones who went to school or had that support, the ones who are grassroots and learned how to 
teach them, taught themselves how to paint or play guitar. Um, you're talented and you're supported by your city. You don't have to leave to become successful. So I really am in the process of really trying to define programs that um, provide pipelines of opportunities for our artists to retain and keep them here. Um, and not doing it in a silo, but really strategically partnering with people here in Greensboro, the organizations, the private sector. Um, how do we do that? How do we work together to make this a robust, to create a robust pipeline of creatives to go out into the world so people can look at Greensboro and say, you want talent? You need to go there because that's where it is. So that's what, those are one of my larger initiatives and long-term initiatives that I'm focusing on. Um, but that's really something I think can happen. We have so much business coming to Greensboro. Honda, all these new organiz all these new companies are coming here. Um, I want them to also see the talent and we can figure out how to connect those two worlds. Because creatives are powerful, they're thought leaders, they're just not entertainers. They really are creative problem solvers. And so try to ca trying to catapult them into a position or a light where they're seen as such is, I think, a part of my responsibility. And I'm excited to take on that big initiative. It's a big job. It's a big job, but I'm, I'm excited to, to be in, the, in, the, in the, the business of doing that work. So what have you seen so far? Is there, any, is there anything that has uh, uh, attracted you that you, as far as artistry goes, that you are seeing, that you are drawn in by? Um, everything. <laughs> so I'll just name a couple of things that I went to recently and I was just like, oh, this, this art scene is just amazing. So the, I want to get the names correctly. First, I met, I've met some amazing artists here and I can't, um, I don't want to say all the, I'm going to say the names wrong, so I'm just going to probably just give first names. But one event that I went to from the, the Blues and Food Cultural, Cultural Preservation Society, I think I'm saying that correctly, I hope I am. Um, but long story short, they produce um, a food, um, a cultural market for a season, but then they also produce these monthly showcases and series where they have outdoor experiences, musical experiences for the community to just come and enjoy, right? Like you think it's a standard like festival, but I went to one, shout out to Atiba, I went to one in October and this man gave away a car. <laughs> like he gave away a car to a woman who was in need. He partnered with another organization, but long story short, um, he got some sponsors and he gave away a car to a single mother who had several children and he saw a need and he helped her out, right? So in my mind, I was like, that's happening here? Like the, the cultural organizations, the arts and culture people who are just the, um, who people think are just here to help us feel good or to provide some cultural experiences on the weekend and people can come and relax and listen to some cool music, they also are minded and concerned about people's well-being and, and it, it just to me was, I was impressed and I was fascinated that that was here in Greensboro. And I said that should be on television, that this, this level, this small but mighty nonprofit organization are doing these large scale things with the intention of giving back to the community in a different type of way. So that to me is impact. Those are the kind of people that I want to support and, and grow and push and elevate and say, please support them as well. because they're doing a different type of service in the community um, and servicing people in a different type of way. So shout out to Atiba for doing that. But I also recently went to the Artist Block and um, I saw a mashup between um, Dance Project that's here in this building, an amazingly talented um, dance organization within the cultural um, center. And they went out into the community and partnered with um, oh my gosh, all the names are escaping me. It's going to come back in three, two, one. It's not here. But no, <laughs> they partner with, um, I can't think of the name. Mm -hmm. Everything is escaping me now. That's fine. It's horrible, yeah. But they partnered with this nonprofit organization and they had four artists. It was a, Indi a classical Indian dancer, um, a spoken word performance artist and rapper, a visual artist, and an African drummer. And those two, those four artists came together to create um, some type of artistry in one day. And the theme I think was family. It was the most beautiful, and it was all done at the artist block across from UNCG. And it was the most beautiful um, 
mashup and celebration of cultures, of community, of ages, and um, performance. It was beautiful. So I really enjoyed that. I went to that last week. And now I'm going to, Sunny Gravely is her name. Sunny, why can I not think of the name of your organization right now? And it's going to make me crazy that I can't think of the name. But um, shout out to Sunny. She does amazing work too with her organization. So just to see those two organizations come together to create something beautiful um, for the community, I thought was pretty powerful. So I, those are the two most recent events that I went to, and I was just super excited. So, and I, I went to the symphony. I went to the symphony. They had something awesome a couple of months ago. So I like it all. I like all the arts, all the backgrounds, all the disciplines. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. And you, yeah, that's right, because you said you're also classically trained yeah. singer too. So this all. Yeah, it was it was awesome, and they're having their I think I forget, the the concert of sevens. I'm saying all the wrong names, but they are looking for a new conductor. So I was a part of the first I think um, series, the first conductor I experienced, and he was awesome. So they have seven more to go, and they're going to choose one at the end of the season. But um, that concert experience, I believe they were doing a tribute to Latin music. It was pretty awesome. So just getting a taste of what Greensboro has to offer has been amazing, and. Um, I enjoy all of it, and everyone is so talented and just so, um, just invested in their craft. Mm -hmm. It's just been fun. It's been really fun. For those that don't, um, tab arts. Tab. Thank you. Tab arts. David, our yes. our, uh, our engineer, he said he saw you there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. He was yes, yes. Tab Art Center. They are an amazing nonprofit. Shout out to Sunny Gravely. Um, I also went to their avant-garde gala. They had their first annual avant-garde gala back in August when I first came on board and that was also pretty powerful too, you know. So um, it's just cool to see these nonprofits that don't have a ton of money doing such awesome work, you know. That's pretty cool. So yeah. that mashup was great with Tab Art Center and the Dance Project doing the collaboration. It was great. And the, art, uh, the artist block also has an Instagram where they feature a lot of these yes. the things on there. Yes, the yes. Events and the shows. They have that. a ton of amazing events. Um, Darlene, she's amazing. She's an artist, and she manages that space as well. So, I mean, it's just a lot of cool stuff here in Greensboro. All the cultural center happenings. I've been to all the art openings with Green Hill and CBA and the American African American Atelier and um, Art Alliance with their pottery sales. Like, it's just so much cool stuff happening in the building and also within the community. I just feel this Greensboro is just running over with things to do and experience. So if someone says, I don't have anything to do, get outside. <laughs> Go outside or contact me or contact this office. There's a bunch of stuff to do. So but you could look no further. Yeah, just Yes Weekly always. Yes. Uh, they always yes. have everything that's listed. I mean, they got shows. They mm -hmm. got God. They got movies. They mm -hmm. break down. They got um, all these uh, yeah. events you can go Ton to. Of events. And I mean, it's always pouring over with uh, stuff that you can do for and, everybody. There's yeah. something for everyone to experience. So I, I love Greensboro, and I cannot wait to really um, become truly invested into the community, the, the sector, and to provide support and um, to take it to the next level. So I'm pumped. Yeah, so what, for those of you, the, uh, folks at home that are, um, I guess, confused would, might be the right word about your position, what exactly is your position here? How, how do you facilitate these arts? Well, it's a big job, right? So I feel like um, this position is really to provide support and um, elevate the arts in Greensboro through a myriad of ways, through promotional opportunities, but also through grant opportunities as well. So we are really about providing equitable processes and funding supports. So a lot of the funding and the, the strategic mind around how my office was designed um, is really to ensure that everybody gets a piece of the pie. There's a huge conversation that's happening um, in the city and within the arts and cultural sector about who gets funding and why, you know, how has that happened? Um, how do I get a piece of that? I'm here to hopefully ensure that the processes are more equitable across the board, to be a resource to other arts organizations and to also be a resource to individuals as well. So there's really no one defined <laughs> way to say what I do the office is in place to really provide equitable supports to the community and to individuals and to elevate the community and the sector as a whole. And we do that in a myriad of different ways. 
We have residencies here um, for diverse disciplines. That's within the Office of Art and Culture, um, which is also in this building. Um, residency programs, grant opportunities, neighborhood arts, curated programs. We have a ton of programs really connecting communities to art initiatives. So it's just a lot. It's a big pot that I'm constantly stirring. And I think I will, I, I, I try not to have one limited defined definition because I don't want to limit the role to that. I see us as a partner to the sector. Um, and we also have a responsibility to uplift and support the sector through multitudes of resources and financial supports. So it sounds like you are, uh, <laughs> I can't break this down like easily. Yeah, you I know can. why you're laughing because you're trying to read my mind <laughs> and I can't even read my mind right now. Uh, you're trying to provide like, it sounds like you are going to be the person that almost like fixes the voting system. You oh know? my gosh. I do not and want it's like, no, pressure. and it's like, nobody is going to do it. Like everybody that, that does it, nobody's going to be happy. You know what I mean? And so it's like, and I, I hate to say that, but it's like, somebody's going to be upset. Somebody's going to be upset. So uh, you have a very tough uh, I road. I do. Um, but it also it deals with marketing mm -hmm. and management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marketing and management, promotion, elevation. I mean, those are all terms that I use daily and every single day. Um, specifically, I think I can say equitable access to this building has been a huge conversation. Um, for years beyond me coming. So I'm actively engaging in ways to make that um, look different and be different. And those conversations, I'll be honest, are some are harder than others. You know, we have to make it make sense in this building. You know, we, the city does a tremendous job with providing, with subsidizing arts and culture, specifically in this building. And we have for decades, um, but the landscape has changed. The sector has changed over the last few decades and now we have to look at what that means and who we're supporting and why and then how others can receive um, the same type of support so it's it's a shift you know um, again these are long-standing conversations everyone's not going to be happy um, but I'm, I'm really trying to do the right thing by the sector you know I really am about equity but I'm also about undergirding and supporting the sector as a whole so things aren't going to happen tomorrow um, but we are in active, hard conversations right now about what that means for this building and how we can move forward and people are, people feel supported across the sector, not just certain sects of people, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is... Mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> God, Mouthful. Bless. And it's a Monday. <laughs> yeah. And you have, I mean, that's a lot, there's a lot of organizations in Greensboro, um, and there's no doubt there's been a lot, when, especially when this building started, there was mm -hmm. a lot knocking on the door yeah, I'm sure. to try and get in, too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there's, I, well, I know that there's tons now. Mm -hmm. um, wow. I don't yeah. even know. Where do you, where do you go? How, how do you, so how, how do you balance all this within a single mom? Because I know you, you touched on it earlier mm -hmm. with film I, school I, and everything. I but. keep, people keep asking me that question, like, how do you balance? And I could honestly say, I am not. I am not <laughs> successfully balanced. I just try to do what I can do every day. Um, the most important job I have is to be a mother to my amazing 11-year-old son, right? That is my most important job. And I keep that at the forefront of my mind. But in terms of navigating the space here and learning the system and learning the city and learning artists and meeting people. I, I, I'm not sure. There are some days I go home and I'm like, I did not do enough. Um, there are other days where I'm like, am I getting it right? Am I talking to the right people? Navigating the relationships, um, not trying to offend. Was I firm enough? I mean, I go through all of those things because I really am about what I say I'm about, right? So I don't have an answer as to how I balance. There are some days that are I'm out of balance. Um, the only thing I can say is that I need to be true to myself and true to my morals and my values, and I need to be um, shining the best light on this city. And I think about that every day. What am I doing you know, in my actions, in my meetings, in my conversations, in these contracts? Am I shining the best light on the city? Am I doing it in the most equitable way? What lens am I using to make these decisions? Who, what other partners do I need to pull in to help me make this decision because this should not be a siloed thing. It is not the Jackie show. <laughs> like I need to make sure that I'm 
having these fruitful conversations with partners. Because and you know, as soon as you make a decision, someone will come for. Hey, wait a minute. How come? Where was I in this? Where was I? Yeah. <laughs> and thank God, I don't have to make these decisions oh, alone. Okay. Good. We do have um, a cultural affairs committee. Um, which are made up of the most amazingly talented artists and committed Greensboro citizens who help make these policies and, and, and who engage with me in these robust conversations. So it's not me making these things on my own, 100%. I have an amazingly talented um, Green, Creative Greensboro staff and team. The city is super supportive across departments. And then the Cultural Affairs Commission, where we meet monthly and we have these deep conversations about what we're doing, who we are and where we want to go. So it's helpful um, to know that I'm not in this alone, but um, I don't have it balanced just yet, and I don't think I will, but I am comfortable with that. I am getting more comfortable with, um, we call it settling in the tension. Just being settled in it. It's just it's a little tense right now. You know, you're in the season of transition, and things are moving, there's friction, but you have to be okay with that, because you know in the, in the long run, it's going to be more successful overall for the city. Yeah. That's a great vision. You, you <laughs> Thank you. You have so much energy. Like where do you, where does the source of energy come from? I, know. I know this was asked in your uh, conversation with Jackie yeah. over here. Uh, um I think I am a naturally talkative, inquisitive and hyper kind of energetic person. I've been in um, all my school report cards from childhood, they have said, she's a smart student, she got an A or she got a B, but she talks too much. <laughs> Let's work on that mouth. Um, my entire life, that was it. That's just not going away. I don't know, I just feel like I have a positive outlook. I think this is the best time to be alive, especially for our sector. There have been so many changes that have happened post COVID. COVID has shown the world that creatives are essential, you would think, right? Just by nature of how they progressed and thrived with no money or just the ingenious or creativity, the things they did in the, in the wake of tragedy and horror, what the sector, what individuals, what organizations did to just help uplift the spirits of the everyday person, you can't ignore that. And I wanna live in that space. I like to live there. So I think I come to work every day with that mentality that I'm working for a greater cause. Yeah. You're living in the chaos. I live That's in, what it sounds I like. I live in the chaos with a paintbrush and a notepad and, no, I'm, I'm joking. But no, I, I live in that, but it's okay. It's, o it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I try. And I'm, I think life is good. God is good. I'm healthy. I have my parents. They're alive and healthy and here. I mean, you, in the scheme of things, when you, when, you, when you step back and look at your life, I feel like I'm a blessed person and I want to... Um, I want to exude that, I want to walk in that, and I want to share that with other people. So I am stressed a lot of the time, but um, it could always be worse. And I'm surrounded by beautiful art every day. I walk into this building and I hear tubas and violas and, people, and, 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 and falsettos and clarinets and tap shoes. And so it's just, I get to live and work in this creative space every day. So I try to take it one day at a time and enjoy that process. Yeah, yeah, that is a lot of fun. I can recall one day I did this like, it was like a mayor's conference or something that yeah. the News and Record held a couple doors down, and um, it was outside the Cultural Arts Center. And I came back and it was like I don't know, it was like an hour and a half or two hours, and mm -hmm. I was just, I was, I was just kind of bogged down with it. I, I hate to say it, it just wasn't, you know, not, I'm not taking anything away but from them, but not. it just wasn't me. And I came back into this building with my camera equipment, and uh, you know, it was heavy, and I was. <laughs> tired and it was late and I walked in and I just heard the African drums upstairs. Right? And I was Come just like, on. I'm home, baby. Right? I am home. Like it just this does is... some it, it does something to your spirit. It does uplift your your it was, spirit. It was mm -hmm. a breath of fresh air. It was awesome. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I love this place. I love it. Yeah, and I I try and, and artists are passionate and sometimes they the passion can turn into anger or frustration. Like you have to look at all those things like what kind of temperament you're working with and I just try to embrace it all. And but isn't I, I that how great it. movies are made, though? It, it is. is. It uh, is. It is. You need all the, the wave. You need all the tension, the parts to get the best product. And people are only really passionate about things they really care about. And people care about this building. People care about their craft. 
people care about their audience, their messaging, what this, you know, what, what, you know, what this, the city supporting them, what that means to them, what it means to their constituents, their audience members, that means a lot to people. And I don't, I don't take that lightly. Well, and even from a logistical point of view, this place is a daycare in the summer. Yeah. When the kids are at oh, a school. Oh, I can't school. wait to see it. Oh, my gosh, yes. Well, from 3 to 6, it's a daycare. Yeah, like, well, yeah, it's really. It's just traffic is crazy. It's great. It's great. Uh, you know, I thought about it. I was like, dang, if I had a kid here, it would be easy because yeah. I, 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 yeah. they'd be so doing much, everything. So much great programming for kids in this building. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd just come to work and send them upstairs. Well, okay, you could, you could do something from, like, I each know. point of the day. I know. I know. Christian, get ready. Yeah. This is going to be your summer. No. <laughs> No, but you're right. There's so much stuff to do. Um, there's so much stuff to do here, and you get to really interface with the people behind the work and the pro and the and the projects. Now, I love to be able to walk. And I was talking to um, Liz from Art Alliance, and she has her students, and they sell their work, and just talking to the people who are creating pottery, and some of them are new, some of them are doing it for a long time. It's just so much passion that goes into everything that happens here. So I I just love being in that space and working with all these people. So I'm just, I don't take it lightly. Um, it, it's not to say this job is just fun and everyone's just like playing. There's, there's serious work to do behind arts and mm -hmm. culture, policy and process and engagement. You know, I think it's, we have, the impact is so huge in what we're doing. Um, I just take the work very seriously and I, I respect everyone who's in this lane um, so much, you know. So it's just, it's a good, it's a good, job to have it's a good field to be i get to see you and we get to laugh we get to <laughs> thank you for the we get to have good conversation oh, about yeah. everything you yes. know so we all are working toward the same mission or goal and that feels good to me that we all have that at the center of our minds and you know what's so funny is i thought about i think about this a lot i think about a lot of these like these problems or these issues that like politicians have, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I always think like we all want to get to the same place, yeah. which is we all really want the same thing. We do. Which is just like everybody just wants to raise their family and, and do their own thing and have a, you know, a good society to live in. But we just have such different ways of how we get there. Getting there. Right. And I know a lot of people are going to no, but that's call me crazy and be like, no, you don't understand this or you don't no, understand you don't. that or that's a very idealistic you know but it's the truth yeah I think we all want the same thing we just go about it in very different ways oh my god so I think a part of my job is to help us get there together yeah you know, you know this is this is the same thing I say about the fire department too sometimes mm -hmm. and, and I love the fire department but you know sometimes the job is easy it's the people that make it complicated <laughs> that part <laughs> That and part, you're just yeah. like, why? Like, this is easy. It's fire. It's water. Like, right. where's the... Where's the? Well, because we're all passionate, right? Yeah. And then we're all coming from our own perspectives and lanes to the same problem. And that's when you have to settle and reset and then try to figure out how do we get where we want to go together. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Fun times. <laughs> but I, no, I do. I really am excited about being in Greensboro for three months. I am... Um, Every day I learn something new about mm -hmm. my job and about the community, and I think that's going to be happening for a while. I'm excited about that, um, but I'm just I'm pumped to be here. I really am. I've been here 12 years. Oh, my gosh. And I'm still learning things. I'm from New Jersey. What part of New Jersey? Clifton. You did tell me that. Yeah, I'm like, I, was, I grew up like 10 minutes outside of Manhattan. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Greensboro, uh, Clifton was one of the major, like, stopping points before you get to the city. We had, like, one of the major, um, whatever you call it, New Jersey transit stops oh. before you get to the okay. city. So uh, how the do you 192. Look? The 192 was the, was the line. The 192. Yeah, the 192. Look at you. The 192X. What? Yeah. So are you, a, are you a Carolinian? Is this your home now? Oh, gosh, yes. I really? ain't going back. Oh, my gosh. So, I, so I was talking about this with Mary Kay Abu's waiter. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the f for what you pay here in insurance, in taxes, and everything else, yeah. it's, it it's, it's cheaper and you are getting so much more for your money. Mm -hmm. And I try and explain this to people yeah. and they're just like, yeah, but where are we going to go? Are we going to move? Yeah. Where, where are we going to go? Listen to that accent. Mm, yeah. <laughs> where are no. we going to move? Where I am will, I going to move? I am will, I going to be down there with you? Uh, I know. I will say this. The quality <laughs> of life here is unmatched. Yeah. The quality of life in Greensboro is unmatched. It is beautiful. 
in the city. It is beautiful. Yeah. So I came here because, and you're going to love this, because my wife, and well, she was my girlfriend at the time, but she taught special needs kids mm. upstairs at Greensboro Ballet. Mm. She taught them dance because one little young lady saw the Nutcracker and she said, That's, I, wanna, I wanna dance. And so they started this program. It was, um, I think it was a senior project for somebody. Oh. And, uh, and so my wife taught on Saturdays for, she had three different classes mm -hmm. for like three different abilities or age groups, depending on whatever it was that they were dealing with. Uh, she taught dance and that's how I got to know this building. Wow. I used to come in here and I used to hang out on Saturdays for like three hours. <laughs> no, but then you got the bug, right? Like you, yeah. you, said, you said, what is this place? Yeah, what is this place? Well, I, I was trying to, I was kind of trying to do what you were doing was I wanted to, I applied to like a bunch of places. Mm -hmm. I applied to news places and I was going to be, uh, I was going to do news. I really just wanted to be a camera person. That's really all I wanted to be. And then um, I applied here at uh, GCTV and here I am. I was like, what the heck am I going to do? You do half, that was the job description, was half hour to hour long programming. But shoot, I needed the money. Like, I was working at Domino's Pizza for nothing an hour. Oh my God. Oh, I was an assistant man. I worked in college and then I was an assistant manager here for like nothing an hour. It was like 8.25. I mean, I don't know how we made it. And then I, I got this job and I was like, well, we need the money. So I don't know what the heck I'm going to do for a half hour to an hour. And now look at you. Yeah, now you are everywhere. I, where did I see you? At the, um, the, the, the art uh, battle. You were there too. You're everywhere. Was it the, uh, the, the trash bash? Yes, the, the trash, trash bash. bash. You, <laughs> you were there so too. You, Jamie, uh, you Jamie, are everywhere. Jamie came to me and she said, uh, we need... I want you to be there for this trash bash. And when I showed up, I mean, it was exactly what you thought it would be. I loved it. And I was like, this is, this is it. This is trash bash. Yeah, this, this, it's exactly as advertised. It was cool. It was very cool. Yes. I Shout really out to Reconsidered Goods. Reconsidered Goods, For yes. all of the, uh, the, the products or the materials used for that trash bash. But it was really cool. Yeah. It was really cool. And I was like, I see Brian everywhere. I was watching you film. Oh, shoot. And, That's yeah. what I have a, you don't have a lot of people that tell me that. Yeah, I don't you're know. everywhere. But, that, but I mean, just saying, look how you started. And it just. I really had no this. idea what I was doing when I started. I still don't have any idea what I'm doing. I still have no clue what I'm doing. You know what and this, doing. you know, even before we started this interview, I was like, what the heck? Like, I did a bunch of research and everything, but I was like, I still don't know what the heck we're going to talk about. Like, I really. No, you're great. I still get nervous before every interview. What? You know that? Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, I do. You're great. <laughs> I sit here. You're, I sit here. I'm like, oh my God, now I really have to do this interview. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I'm so chill when I do my re like I, sometimes I'm anxious depending on the guest, but then like I do my research, like okay, I'm good. I'll no. come up with something, and then like I may, I'm, I start miking people up, and I'm like, oh, all right, it's really yeah. happening. I really, I don't. Did no. I put? Did I write enough down? No, you, no. <laughs> you do this. I, and I would your never, brain starts messing with you. I would never you. think that <laughs> from you because our, our first meeting we talked for what two hours? Oh yeah. Like we just stood there. We were just like. And we just did not stop talking. You were like, Jackie, we need to sit down and have Yeah, this. we need to have this conversation. I keep telling Karen Archia that we need to do this. Yes! I've done, I've done one program with Karen when she was, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the event that she used to do, but she used to do an event where it was just like, I guess you call it like paint along. Like yes. you do, she did paintings. Oh, okay. Before okay. she had this, before she had the position. Oh, before she was with Creative Yeah, Angel. yeah. Yes. Shout out to Karen, yep. Archia, our amazing community partners. Um, coordinator, she's awesome. Yeah, and I, we always had these. I used to stop by. I do my little. I do a little walk. If you see me, um, I'm doing one of three things. One of two things when uh, I walk with my cup of coffee around the cultural center, around Labour Park. One, I'm either avoiding something, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm trying to think Telling through something, yourself. or I just need, <laughs> or, or I just need, uh, or I just need <laughs> some fresh air because mm. we don't have any. Uh, you know, I just need some sunlight yeah. because you take serotonin in through the yes. eyes. Yes. And so um, that's how, you know, anyway. So if I see you now yeah. walking around. What are you avoiding? I, that's what I'm <laughs> going to say. Who are you hiding from, Brian? Mm -hmm. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? It's a very real possibility. <laughs> You're hiding from somebody. Yeah. Oh no, not goodness. hiding from somebody. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm procrastinating for a moment or I'm just... But it's it's no. very real. You do good. You it do happens. good work. You oh, do good shoot. work. You do. Um, 
Everybody knows you. But yeah, so yeah, anyway, the, the point <laughs> of the story is so when I came around, she used to sit at the front desk mm -hmm. upstairs, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to have these great, like, philosophical discussions uh -huh. about life. Yeah. And she's like, and we just, like, within five seconds, I mean, you get a, sh you, we had a shovel, and we were digging deep into <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. That's what that's what happens. No, I mean, yeah, I, I'm surrounded with a, I'm really blessed with a, a really strong team who are also artists and who get it, right? They're as equally as invested into the community mm -hmm. and Greensboro and um, making it as representative and as inclusive as possible. So we just do good work all day. Like, we're really excited. And again, you know, we, it's, it's not all fun and games. Sometimes you have to make hard decisions and tell people no, um, or bring people back to the center. <laughs> but um, that's a part of the process, right? So we only want to make our processes and programs better, and I think I have a really dynamic team who does that. So shout out to Creative Greensboro. We could honestly go on for another like two hours, like yes. like that. I know. For, I know. With no, I, I honestly, we should take it just a camera. Like John and I could just take a camera and we could just follow you around as oh you my do. God. Follow you around first Friday. We could have you narrate Ooh. a first Friday. I think that would be fun because I always go out or I try to go out with a camera and capture a whole bunch of stuff on first Friday. I can't get everything, but I try to get as much in okay. as I can. That sounds fun. <laughs> this first just... Friday is going to be awesome. Everybody come on out. Brian, be there with your camera. It's going to be nice. We have a nice mix of participants participating this this year it's the last one for the year so it's gonna be great right so this is this is usually first Friday partnered with uh, first Friday partner with partners in the building mm -hmm. so we activate the building on first Fridays of every month and we have they have their doors open and people can come experience an exhibition hear some music um, sometimes we have youth recitals our ballerinas come out and dance um, our musicians our young musicians come out and perform or we also have partners um, outside the building, they also come and activate the space as well. Everything is free, first Friday. You can come look at our, listen to our grow resident, um, Sun Queen Kelsey. She's our resident for, our last resident for grow. She'll be having a culminating, I believe, experience. Um, if not the culminating, but she is doing a performance this first Friday coming up. So it's a lot of the hires is having an event, uh, Van Dyke is having a theatrical, I believe, experience happening there. So. This building will be activated um, come this first Friday of December. So please come out and experience it. It's going to be awesome. Wow, come to the awesome. Cultural Center, everybody. I have to have her on, too. I, I talked to her. Yes, I haven't emailed awesome. her yet. I need to have her on. Um, thank you so much for being on. Is there anything that you want to add that I have not touched on at all? No, I just, I just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, you do great work. I support you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you do. You do awesome work, and together we are going to elevate Greensboro. Yes, we need to have you back on. Yeah, I, I'll, anytime. Let me know. I'll be here. All right. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.